Soils are so important to plants, not simply because the roots are growing in them and they need some support. It's also very important. But soils are the medium. It is the place where plants find their nutrients. It is the place where their health is determined. It is the place where they interact with microorganisms. It's the place that really is filled with living microorganisms in many ways. Soil is important as a living organism. We can grow plants in just about anything. We can grow them in pieces of broken cement. We can grow them in marbles. We can grow them in water by bubbling air in the water, which is another topic. But soils are so important for plants because they impart so much information, so much fertilizer and nutrients to the plant that it's so responsible for whether that plant will be successful in production, whether it will be produce a lot or not enough, whether it will live, whether it will die. So let's spend this segment talking about soils, what they are, and how we can change them into something that we want. The ultimate reason we want to change them is because we want to manipulate the plants that we're growing. Soils are made up of two basic components from a large point of view. The first component is structural. Structural meaning how the different components of that soil are put together. We can get a structure from anything. I mentioned before broken cement, marbles. There's no structure in water. That's why plants have to be supported in some way if they're growing in water. They can get the nutrients that they need but there's no place to anchor themselves. But certainly roots growing in broken cement, growing in marbles, the roots can find their path between the marbles, between the cement, and anchor themselves so they're upright. They can't do that in water. But there's other things that water can do. Water is an important component of soils because this is the highway by which plants receive so much information, they receive so much of their nutrients. But the structure of that soil, how it's put together, is one component. The other component is the chemistry of that soil. That's probably the most difficult to understand. So the two components, one is the basic structure of that soil, and number two is the chemistry of that soil. If you have the wrong chemistry in a soil, the plant will fail. That's not true of the structure. You can have lots of different structure and the plant will survive. But you can't have lots of different chemistry in that soil because really there's the best chemistry and then there's other chemistry that could cause the plant to fail. There are only three basic components in soil. And they're based upon the size of that, of those particles. Those components or particles are sand, silt, and clay. And I gave them to you in the order of their size. Sand is the largest component. Silt is medium in size. And clays are the smallest. Sand particles can be fairly large. But the um, silt component is small compared to the large size. If we were to do a comparison, let's say if we were to do a sand particle, and if we were to increase the size of that sand particle to become the size of, let's say, a major building in downtown Manila, 
like the SM Mall. If we were to increase it, the size of that small sand particle and make it much, 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 much larger, so it's equivalent in size to the SM Mall, do you have that picture? Then what size will be a clay particle? The clay particle, if we increase its size proportionately to the particle that's the SM Mall, the clay particle will be the size of a mango. Can you get that picture? The picture, the size of the SM Mall, the size of an orange, is the difference in size between the sand particle and the smallest particle, the, the clay particle. What about the silt particle? Well, the silt particle would be the size of a limousine, a jeepney, in front of the SM Mall. So those are our three relative sizes. SM Mall, jeepney or limo, and mango. So we can see very easily that if we put two SM Malls together, there's a big space between the two SM Malls. That space between the two SM Malls is where the water flows and the roots penetrate from the plants. Because the only space in the soil that can be occupied cannot be the particles, the sand, silt, and clay. It must be the spaces between these particles. These, what we call pore spaces, not P-O-O-R, but P-O-R-E, pore spaces. These pore spaces is where the roots grow and where the water can flow, but also as important is to the water is also the air. So the spaces between particles, SM all, but what about the mangoes? Can't they also fill the spaces between the SM malls, between the sand particles? They can. And so can the limos, so can the jeepneys. They can fill these spaces. And when they do fill these spaces, the water does not drain easily. This is why when we have a sand, and we pour water on 100% sand, the water goes through the sand very quickly. Why? Because those spaces between the SM malls are not occupied with anything. The water flows through those spaces very quickly. We pour water on top of the sand, it flows, flows through it. Well, you can imagine if you have a fertilizer mixed with that water, what will happen to the fertilizer? Well, of course, it will move immediately through that, between those sand particles and lost. So it's important to have a mixture of clay, silt, and sand. Where will these clay particles be? They'll be between the sand particles. Where will the silt particles be? They'll be between the sand particles. So the spaces between sand particles are filled with clay and silt. And the water then must flow around the jeepney around the mangoes, maybe past the mangoes, past the jeepneys, and through it. And so when we start to mix sand, silt, and clay together, the water doesn't move through it as rapidly. It moves much more slowly because the spaces between the sand particles are now filled with silt and clay particles. And that water and air must find that very tortuous path between the particles. Remember, the roots of plants cannot go through a particle of soil. It has to go around them. So it must look for these pathways between the sand, silt, and clay particles. So we have what's called a textural triangle that uh, has sand on the corners of the triangle, a sand, a silt, and a clay. And with that sand, silt, and clay, the formal name of that soil is given based upon the percentages of sand, silt, and clay. Uh, the loamy soil has percentages of both of all three, sand, silt, and clay. If it's heavy into silt, we call it a silty loam. 
If it's heavy into clay, we call it a clay loam. If it's heavy into the sand, we call it a sandy loam. So the texture of a soil is important because it determines how much water we can apply to the soil.